What's up creators, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel, I'm Tony Fuentes. Today we're turning to the Edag series and we're gonna try to replicate the analog style of the Fujifilm Superia. Now this negative film was created to compete with the Kodak Portra. So we're gonna see a lot of similarities in terms of dynamic range or latitude and in terms of the color reproduction. And it was suggested by one of you guys in a previous video by Jeff Frost. So if you have any other suggestions on styles that you want to break down, either from analog styles or from photographers or Instagrammers, whatever you want, just put it down in the comment section and I'll check them out. So first of all, we're gonna jump into some examples and learn the characteristics or main features of this film. So then we have that knowledge and we're going to apply it when we're editing photos step by step within Lightroom and then creating a preset out of it. So let's jump into it. Okay, so the example images that we're going to look at right now are shot with the Fuji Superior Extra 400, which is a very common one uh, in this lineup. And in terms of exposure and contrast, we can see that there's a lot of information in the dark parts of the image. It does have a 400 ISO. So we can see uh, detail in the dark parts of the image. We're basically not going to lose anything over there. We are preserving the black, so we have a nice contrast. And in comparison, the highlights are a bit blown out. We can see that the highlights are a bit raised we don't have as much of information in the bright parts of the image as for example the kodak gold or kodak portra and therefore we're creating this very nice contrast where we have loads of information in the shadows but a bit less in the sky now as a consequence of having brighter highlights we're reducing a bit of the saturation or we're losing a bit of the saturation in the blues of the sky now talking about the color reproduction, we're looking at a very mild saturation, very normal. We don't see any crazy tone shift. There are a couple of colors that change just a bit. For example, the reds are taking a bit more towards the brick-like colors or the oranges. Meanwhile, the greens are a bit deep towards the emerald. So nothing too crazy, just a little slight tone shift. Now, one color that is affected by this film is the blues, which are quite desaturated, as we mentioned before. Now this being a Fujifilm, we do have that classic uh, magentas in the highlights, very mild, but when it's combined with a sunset, it really starts to saturate. And also in undersaturated parts on our image or underexposed, we're gonna see a green tint more towards the cyans starting to appear. So right here, for example, in this model, we can see how her face is in the shadows and it's being painted with the green. So be very careful with how you expose the skins of your models. And in other scenarios where we have overcast days, we're gonna see that green cast uh, being added to basically the entirety of the shadows and the midtones. Now, the last aspect of this film that's worth mentioning is the grain because we do have to reproduce that. And the grain is very small, but it is quite contrasty. We can see it even if we don't get too close to the image. There's the film grain. It's nothing too distracting, just giving a very nice texture to the photographs. So creators, I think we have all the information needed to replicate the Fuji Superior. Now let's jump into Lightroom and start color grading. But before that, as always, I have to remind you that the presets that we're gonna create today, we're gonna create two, are gonna be added into the Edit Light Preset Pack V3 and the analog preset pack. Link up here to both of them in case you wanna check it out and support them. In those preset packs, you're gonna find all the presets that we create in the Edelike series throughout this year. So as we continue to add and analyze more styles, more presets will be added into those packs. And it's a great way you can support me or just skip all the tutorials. So if you can support me in that manner, I'd be very thankful. If not, don't worry guys, um, let's go into the editing process. Okay, great, there's one scenario here, I have this image and I'm in the develop module over here and we can start editing. So first of all, this image isn't the best in the world, but we do have all of the colors that we want to alter. We have the reds in the bricks, we have the blues in the sky and in the bridge, and also we have some green vegetation in the background to achieve, well, the colors that we saw in the analysis. First of all, we want to achieve the contrast and the latitude, and then we're gonna move down to the color grid. Now for exposure and contrast, the tools that I like to use are the basic corrections over here, start from highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, the presence tab that also alters the contrast and saturation and the tone curve. I like to use them as several layers to create different types of edits. Now, the sliders that we have at the top, temperature, tint, exposure and contrast, these general sliders, I like to omit them, not use them in the preset because these are the values that I use to adjust the preset to other photos that maybe are taken in a different manner. For example, right here, I have a 0.75 stops of exposure added because the original image, as you can see, I shot it underexposed, so I don't want that 0.75 to be included in the preset and be applied into other photos that maybe are properly exposed. So these ones, I like to use them to correct the image. Having said that, let's start with the basic corrections. So just as a reminder, we want to bring up the shadow so we have more detail in the dark parts of the image, but retaining the contrast and then having the highlights a bit reduced. So right here, first of all, highlights, I'm just gonna bring them down towards the negative just a bit, around the minus 15. 
it's going to be enough not too much we don't want a flat exposure where we lose all the contrast just around the minus 15 is just going to be enough and then the shadows we do not want to go towards negatives otherwise we lose information the opposite of that we want higher dynamic range so we're going to go towards the positives on the plus 35 and immediately you can notice the difference how we have loads more information in the shadows and then white again we're going to go towards the negatives around the minus 15 and then by raising the shadows in the previous slider what we did is just bringing up the blacks just a bit so they're a bit grayed out so what we're going to do is just return those blacks to their former glory around the minus 15 as well and now we have an image that has pure blacks but also more information in the shadows Okay, next up, we're gonna move down to the tone curve. Now, the tone curve is a very powerful tool, as you know, that allows us to alter the exposure and contrast on our image. Also, we can even use it to color grade with the RGB channels over here. And we have the parametric tone curve over here. Today, we're gonna to just use the tone curve over here, the point tone curve, to create those faded out blacks. Most analog film images have this very distinctive grayed out black or washed out blacks. Right here, as you can see in the interface of Lightroom, we have pure blacks in the background, and we can see those pure blacks also in the shadows. So what I'm going to do is create a point here in the shadows. Now, by the way, if you don't know how the tone curve works, I already made a dedicated tutorial about this tool. Link up here if you want to check it out. Today, I'm not going to go too into detail. So I'm just going to create a point here in the shadows so we can control our exposure in the, in the shadows right in the middle of the diagonal. The input is going to be 30. The output is going to be 30. These two values are basically the coordinates. X-axis is this one, 30 to the right. And output is vertically 30 points so it's basically in the middle and it's not doing anything it's just acting as an anchor so we don't affect the shadows anymore then what we are going to move is this point over here that controls the blacks the darker points on our image and as you can see if i put it up our blacks start to gray out and become more faded now this is way too much obviously i'm just going to go subtly to a five percent just making them a little bit grayish not too much uh, and to the point that we lose some contrast so with Y on our keyboard, we can see the before and after. Uh, now we have an image that has loads more information in the dark parts of the image, as you can see. And also we have that very distinctive contrast that we wanted. Next, we're going to move up to the presence tab. Now the presence tab that contains texture, clarity, and dehaze, well, it's basically a tool that can help us stylize our edit. So as you can see, if I zoom in, the texture adds more texture or reduces the sharpness towards the negatives. Clarity adds more contrast or reduces it in the midtones. And then the haze, well, it adds more haze or it reduces it. So these tools impact our image heavily. So we have to be very careful on the amount that we introduce. The impact in terms of contrast, but also in terms of saturation. So why am I going to use this? Because images, digital images like this one are tad sharp. They're completely sharp. And um, this one was taken at one over 5,000 of a second at 2.8 aperture and it's very sharp and I wasn't using any tripod or anything like that. Analog cameras, analog photography was a little bit less sharp. The lenses weren't as refined as today. So what I'm going to do is just reduce a bit of the texture and the sharpness towards the negatives around the minus 12. The clarity as well, reduce a bit of the contrast towards the negatives. And then the haze towards the negatives adds this very a similar effect to halation which is a defect in lenses and in cameras as you can see towards the negatives it has this haze around the bright parts of the image obviously this isn't exactly the same as um, the halation effect but it does create a similar effect so i'm going to go towards the negatives just to around the minus 12 and all of them just creating an image that is a bit less sharp a bit less contrasty and more organic so that's it for exposure and contrast now let's move down to color now in color we're going to start off by using camera calibration to alter the palette the overall color palette to make it look more like fuji colors so camera calibration is all the way at the bottom of lightroom classic and as you can see it contains the red primary the green primary and the blue primary otherwise known as the rgb and the rgb are basically three colors that compose every single pixel that we can see in our digital image so by altering these colors we're altering all the image but also uh, just pay attention that maybe the blues as we move the blue slider we're altering yes the blues but we can also alter the blues by moving the red slider because as i mentioned every single color is composed by a mixture of these three so we have to keep that in mind and not to make changes too abrupt in this tool otherwise you're going to end up with a crazy edit so it's a very complex tool again i already made a tutorial about it link up here if you want to check it out today we're just going to use it to achieve the tones of the fuji superior now first of all the reds we want the reds in particular of the bricks more towards the oranges rather than towards the magentas this isn't what we want we want them towards the positives now obviously this is way too high i'm just going to leave it at 15 percent just a conservative value just ever so slightly taking all the reds towards the oranges independently if they're magentas reds or oranges all the colors in the warmer tones 
are gonna be just shifting a bit towards the oranges. Then I'm just gonna make them a bit more vibrant. As you can see, we have the saturation slider over here and the saturation slider would just basically add more of the red into the colors of the image. And as a consequence, they'll brighten up just a bit. Look, uh, if I go to the positives, all the colors that contain a lot of red really start to stand out a lot more. Obviously, this is way too much. Just gonna leave it ever so slightly around the 10%, just giving a slight boost into the warmer tones. Then in the greens, remember that the greens that we saw in the example images were, yes, a bit desaturated, but most of them were tending towards the cooler tones, towards the, uh, the mint-like colors. So I'm gonna go not towards the negatives with the greens, but towards the positives. And as you can see, if I go towards the positives, they change towards the mint-like colors. Again, around the 15% is just gonna be enough, just a very subtle change over here. The other thing that we're gonna do in camera calibration is reduce the intensity of the sky. And therefore, we're just gonna bring back a bit of the saturation on the blues towards the negatives, not too much, but just ever so slightly, so they're a bit less dominant. And with Y on our keyboard, we can see what we're doing. Uh, look at the difference between the blues by this slider and just reducing a bit of the intensity on the blues then we have those reds tending a bit more toward the oranges and those trees in the background more towards the mint light colors. Now, there are very subtle changes, but we are gonna emphasize them a bit more in HSL. And it's just in camera calibration, I don't like to go ham with the sliders, otherwise we can end up with horrible results when we apply this preset into other scenarios. So let's move up to HSL, which is now in color mixer over here. And here we can change the hue, the saturation, or the luminance of specific colors. So right here, the only thing that I want to change is the greens. So greens, I'm just gonna go a bit uh, to the negative in the saturation and also in the saturation of the yellows because as you can see, most of the greens over here are controlled by the yellow slider. Just again, towards the negative, just uh, bringing them back just a bit. And then the hue, of course, of the greens more towards the cooler tones, towards the plus 20. Okay, so we're on our way. One thing that is missing is in the effects tab, we can add some grain because the image right now is looking very clean. So let's go down to the effects tab over here and add some grain. And remember that the grain that we saw in the example images was perceivable, but it wasn't very big or very distracting. So let's add some quantity over here. Not too much, otherwise this is completely ridiculous. Maybe around the 30% is gonna be enough, 33. And then the size, as we zoom out, we can't see it. So let's add some size to it maybe around the 55. And there we have a noise or a grain that is, it can be noticeable from farther away. But if we zoom in, there it is, it's not too harsh. Also, if you want a grain that is a bit more noticeable, you can always intensify the contrast between the particles with roughness. And as you can see, if we zoom out, now it's very noticeable. But for my personal preference, I'm just gonna leave it by default at 50. So this would be the base preset that we can use in all types of scenarios, including for portraiture. Why? Because we didn't add the typical magenta and green tint that Fuji has. So let's save this preset for more general use, and then we're gonna create the variant. So to save a preset, we're gonna go to the left panel over here, hit the plus sign, create a preset, and then we're gonna name it. And remember that you don't want to mark the values that you didn't move. For example, white balance, exposure, and contrast. We didn't use them, we want to unmark them, just as lens corrections transform. So briefly, I'm just gonna apply the preset into other photos and check if the results are what we wanted. Otherwise, we need to modify it. So let's see this image of my mother in the garden. We have all those greens and all those reds. Um, let's apply the preset. And there we have it. We have those greens a bit more muted and tend towards the cooler tones, exactly what we wanted. The reds are a lot more vibrant than in the original image, plus the film grain. And we have a very nice contrast. So we have those pure blacks, but also notice how there's more information in this image compared to the original. So I think we did quite a good job in this one. So here we have this horrible image of the San Marcos Plaza. We have all the trash cans and the building uh, in the background. So let's apply the base preset over here. And as you can see, it looks quite nice. We have those muted blues, not completely muted, but they are drawn back. Then we have this nice image with a lot of dynamic range compared to the original. We can see more detail, but without losing the contrast. And I think we did quite a good job with the color palette, just emphasizing a bit of the oranges in the reds. Okay, so now that we have our base preset, which is a very versatile version of the Superior 400, now let's create the proper version that has those classic magentas and greens that Fuji is so famous for. So right here I have this image and let's apply the base preset as a basis. So we don't have to start from scratch. Immediately you can notice the difference. We have loads more information in the shadows. The, that grain and that typical contrast of the analog style. 
Now let's move down to the color grain because this is the only tool that we're going to move to create the variant. So in color grain, we can basically add a tint into the shadows, into midtones, and into the highlights and create uh, the color balance that we want. So I already made a tutorial about this tool, link up here if you want to check it out. So first of all, shadows. We want to add that green tone into the shadow. So it's very simple. You can basically just move the point in the center towards the borders to add more saturation and we can move it about to select the correct tint. So you guys can maybe go with a cooler mint like color over here. In my case, I'm gonna go more towards the classic um, greens over here, something a bit more warm around the, the hue is gonna be 113 and the saturation obviously is way too high. I'm just gonna reduce it and I'm gonna go with a value around an 11%. If you guys want a more of an intense saturation, just pull it up. But in this case, you can see obviously the difference. We have that green, slight green cast in added into the shadows. Then in the highlights, what I'm going to do is just add a purple or magenta tint over here. So I'm just going to add some saturation, play around. I'm going to go with the hue of 270 and the saturation obviously is way too high as well, just around an 8%. And as you can see, it's barely noticeable in the highlights, but it is going to work when you're maybe shooting a sunset. It's going to just add to the saturation on any purple that appears in your image. But right now it's very subtle, just adding this a slight purple tint into the highlights. So let's save this variant and see how it performs in other images and see if we need to change a bit of the saturation. Okay, so I have this very contrasty image in New York. We have loads of shadows and loads of highlights. Let's apply the base preset first. And you can see the difference. Immediately we have loads more information in the dark parts of the image. We have that film grain. The blues are drawn back just a bit. And now let's apply the version, which is the color version over here that adds that green cast. Now, as you can see as this image, mostly is being classified as shadows because well, all of it is very dark. Uh, Lightroom is painting all the buildings with that green cast. And then we have that magenta creeping in, in the sky, which is just perfect. Just what we wanted. Now, if you guys want to change a bit of what Lightroom classifies as shadows and what it's painting as a green, you can always use the balance tool over here to dictate what Latin classifies as that part of the image. For example, if I go towards the negatives to the minus 100, we're telling Lightroom that all the image is being classified as shadows. Therefore, even my clouds in the background are being painted with this uh, green cast. Otherwise, if I go towards the plus 100, I'm telling Lightroom that all the image is highlighted. Therefore, the green disappears and now we have that magenta added into the entirety of the image. So you can always play around with the balance tool for specific scenarios where you don't want it maybe um, your skin tones to be painted with the green cast. You can always play around with the balance to adjust what Lightroom is classifying as grains and magentas. So creators, I think we did quite a good job. The base preset just adds this typical analog uh, contrast and dynamic range. And then the color just adds the, the great or classic Fuji colors and just, uh, just add more intensity and it looks fantastic. So creators, that's how I would achieve the Fuji superior colors in digital photography. I hope you achieved some knowledge out of this video. If you did, can you please press the like button, subscribe, share it with a friend, all those things. And if you're interested, the presets that we created today are in the Edit Like Preset Pack V3 and the Analog Preset Pack and also in the Edit Like LUT Pack V3. So you can find them up here on my shop. In the LUT Pack, I've just reconverted these presets into LUT so you can apply these edits into your video as well. So if you're interested in supporting me, link up there to my shop. If not, I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you and I'll see you in the next one.